Hey, this is Jeremy again, and welcome back to Garage of Slot Cars. Um, for once, it's uh, 50 degrees outside instead of minus zero this week, so I thought I'd come back out here to the garage. Um, I've had some questions from some very beginners or people who haven't even bought a set yet, like um, where the lane change button is, what are some of the digital features of, of a Carrera digital track. Um, so I thought I'd make a video over um, just the basics. Maybe you're deciding what uh, digital set to buy, Scale Electric, Carrera, or whatnot. Um, you can search the other brands. I, I can show you Carrera today. So I thought I'd go over some basics, and I'll show you the to get the most out of a digital track, I feel you need an app also. Um, I use a Smart Race app, and I'll show you some of the features of that. I think it adds a new element, makes it a little more fun. So let me turn the camera around and um, we'll uh, to go over some of the basics out here. Hopefully the audio is a lot better. I have a microphone now. The audio was kind of iffy out here in the garage. Um, I should get the, the area we'll be working in pretty good right here. Okay, there you go. Okay, so... Um, okay, this is a Carrera Digital. Um, this right here is a Bluetooth app. That's all you need to run an, an app, like the Smart Race app. Um, your set won't come with this. Um, so I'll we'll start with the basics. When you get a set, uh, never mind this, you'll hear the app running in the background. Three, two, one, go. Um, with a digital set, you can run up to six cars. Um, your set will come with two controllers. Actually, let me find you a stock controller. That's not a stock controller. Um, the Carrera will come with will come with one of these. Um, this will be your throttle. This will be your lane change button. It'll come with two of those, actually. Um, I don't use these. I just prefer the um, pistol grip. Um, this is my speed, and this is the lane change button. This is a Digital Race Solutions Ram Jet X controller for Carrera. Um, you go to digitalracesolutions.com. They'll have them there. They just plug. They plug right into digital. There's no, or Carrera Digital. There's nothing, nothing to do or anything. Okay, so. Your basics, you can run up to six cars. Well, how do you do that? You, this car doesn't know which controller it's hooked to. So what you do is you have a code button. You hit code one time. You press the button on whichever uh, controller you want to work it. You press it, watch the lights on the car and the controller. That car is now programmed to this controller no matter which lanes it's in. Even if there's another car on that lane, it won't work both cars. Just this one. So that's your, that's your basic on how you get... Your controllers don't work a, a, on an analog. Your controller works a lane. Works any car that's on that lane. On a digital set... Your controller works the car it's coded to. So, um, when the car's not moving, this button turns the lights off. You can run your car with the lights off, hit it again, and runs the lights on. Um, now, when your car is moving, however, that is your lane change button. And to move the camera around to where I, I have a lane change on the front straight away right there um, that lane changes so you can get into the pit lane from the outside edge now on your digital cars you will have a sensor light right there that light will correspond with a sensor on the track the sensor is right here for this lane change 
So if we come across here, we just go across it like nothing. But if we go across it while, our, while we're pressing down the lane change button, the car switches lanes. Uh, happens quick. You can, just, you can just press it right before you get there or hold it down as you're coming up to it. Boom, you switch lanes. So that's your lane change function. Um, uh, you don't get a pit lane when you just buy a set, a basic Carrera set. Um, you have to add the pit lane. Um, I, I su <laughs> Sorry about that. I suggest adding a pit lane. It adds a lot to it. Um, so, okay, another function of a Carrera is a ghost car. Um, hit the code button twice. Now we hit, hit the lane change and the lights will flash. Now we go around the, let me zoom the camera out here. If we start going around the track, and we get to a speed we want the car to stay, we hit the lane change button again. Now that car, I'm not holding nothing down. That car is driving by itself. That's called a ghost car function. It will maintain the same speed and it will change, randomly change at the switch tracks. So if you're racing this car coming up on a lane change, you don't know if it's going to stop or not. So I like to, I race without magnets. In this particular car, this Porsche 904, I leave the magnets in it. And I set it up at a pretty uh, fast pace, and it, it allows me to race with that car. So, three, two, one, go. I'll put it back, code it back to a controller. That's the other thing. If you if you forget and leave a car programmed as a ghost car, as soon as you set it down your track, it's going to take off. Um, another neat function of Carrera is a pace car. Um, I have one, and if you put that pace car in the pits, and you you hit the code button three times till the third light lights up, same as a ghost car. You go around to the speed you want and hit it. Now that that'll be coded as a pace car and it'll be coded into that pit lane. So if you're having a race and you want to use a pace car, um, what you can do is there's a pace car button right here. I hit pace car button. This car is going to turn its top lights on, flash its lights, and it's going to go around for pace laps. Do so watch. So now that pace car left the pits and is going around the track now with its lights flashing. Now that will continue until I hit the pace car button again. And then when I hit the pace car button again, it will go around the track and it will activate every switch track. I'll hit it again until it has returned itself into the pits. So watch, it'll come around here and it'll hit the lane changes and it'll go into the pits and stop. So pretty neat. Um, I've got several pace cars. I've got two of them and I've got another one coming, a new Corvette CR8. That'll be in an upcoming unboxing video. It's getting shipped soon. So that's one way you can use a pit lane. You can even add another pit lane just for your pace car. Uh, a lot of people do that. Um, I don't use the pace car a lot, so I'm not going to do that with mine. Um, okay, so the pits. Um, once you cross this sensor here, make sure that's on camera. Yeah. Once you cross that sensor that says fuel, um, you will, you will be in the pit lane. And once you stop, you hold down your lane change button and it will fuel fake fuel your car. Um, now 
if you have no supporting app or anything, your lights will flash on your Carrera car when it's out of fuel. Jeremy has no more fuel. Um, I'll show you on this. I just turned the fuel on. I'll show you on this app. Um, Carrera sells little, little dashboards. Last I looked, they're like $70 a piece. And they're for one car, and it has a gas gauge. I wouldn't recommend doing that because this, this is like 30 bucks, and, and I think the app is $5 for a lifetime. Um, and it's a lot more fun, I feel. <laughs> so, um, but what that adds with the app, I'll zoom in on my TV here so you guys can see. Okay, um, that top car, Porsche, and my name, Jeremy, that's, that's the car that I've got set up. Um, it's that green bar that says 100%. That's my fuel. So I will hold this car up. And as, as your car goes around the track, watch this fuel bar. It will go down. See, 92%, 85. We'll go ahead and run this down. And listen, the app will announce Jeremy needs to refuel. That's your warning that you're getting low. Should be coming up. The bar will turn to orange and then red. Jeremy needs to refuel. Did you hear that? That's your warning. And it'll say Jeremy has no more fuel. If you continue to go and run out of fuel, and if you're in a race, it will stop counting your laps until you go in and refuel. So now I'm going to enter the pit lanes with this car. You won't see it. Because uh, you're focused on the TV, but you'll hear it. You'll hear Jeremy's entered the pits. Listen for it. Jeremy is in the pits. Did you hear that? So my car is in the pits. Now watch that orange bar that says 21%. I'm going to hold down the lane change button. See how it's fueling my car? Jeremy has finished refueling. And it even announces you're done, and then you can leave the pits. So... That's pretty neat during a race um, because uh, you're going around and there's even strategy. Say you have 10 laps left, but you're out of gas. Don't go in there and fill your tank. Go in there and just hold the button down and get 20% in there, and that's going to be enough for you and get out of the pits. Um, so sometimes there's some strategy involved. Um, a lot of people like to go till it's almost empty and you run the risk of running out and running a lap around your track and not being counted. Um, uh, well, while I got you focused on that, I'll just give you a walk around on this app. Um, this is called free practice, which is how I do it when I'm out here by myself and it keeps track of my lap times. Um, if I happen to break a track record, it keeps laps track of all the laps that are on each car. Um, let me show you on this app you enter. Hold on. Can't see. Okay, so I can hit I can hit cars. And it will list all my cars. I have like 90 cars. And I take a photo and I add them into this app when I get them. So I have every one of my cars in here. And you can click on a car. Um, um, on each car too, it says... Um, Make Chevrolet, like the, the yellow Camaro at the top left. It says make Chevrolet laps 140. So since I've entered it into this app, I've got 134 laps with that car. So it kind of keeps track of the cars you drive a lot. Like we'll go down to a, there's a Porsche down here that everyone likes to drive when they come over. So it's got a lot of laps on it. We'll find it. Um, when I raced with magnets, it was really stuck to the track, so beginners liked it. Okay, in the upper right-hand corner, the Porsche 911 number 56 got 512 laps on that car. 
um, cause that was kind of a favorite for people to, uh, to drive when I ran magnets. So with this app too, you can set up, um, like I do a free practice, which is a lot of times you can set up a qualifying session, like, um, five minutes and a person runs their car and the next person runs their car the next person runs their car say you have five people over it will put you guys in a starting grid of who qualified the best and you can start your race you can do races by time or by laps you can set up a race to run for five five minutes so you can set up a race to run for five minutes and it just ends at five minutes and it'll announce the winners and put you guys in order or the way the way I do it is um I'll do like a 40 lap race so when the when the top car hits 40th lap it stops it announces the winner it shows you finishing um the app will show you lead changes who did the fastest lap throughout the race who did the slowest lap the amount of time you spent in the pits it's really it's really pretty neat uh, it wasn't very expensive. Like I said, I bought it a couple years ago. You just have to pay for the app once. Um, I want to say it was like $5, $10. I mean, it was, it, I, now that I've had it, if he raised the price to $50, I'd still buy it. It's, it's a great, it's a great app and he's always updating it. Um, it'll say, uh, latest update is now available to download and he's adding features all the time. Um, he has a, like an Instagram, but he doesn't post a lot. The creator of this app, and it's in another language, and I have to use Google Translate. And sometimes his explanations become lost. But but it's easily you can navigate around it pretty easy. Um, all I have is a. Let me turn the camera. Hey, what I have, I have an iPad right there, and I just have a a USB cable running from here. To my TV back there so that's how it works on my TV it's just mirroring and then the sound you hear comes through my TV that's the race sounds in the background you are so I highly recommend the app so you can see with digital you can you can race ghost cars you can um, uh, race against time if you have an app like in my free race I'm always trying to break my track record um, so you can, if you switch to urethane, to rubber tires, you can race your car and you can see, instantly see your time, see your differences. If you make upgrades to your car, you can see if it's actually making them faster, slower. Okay, see, now that I think about it, I forgot another feature of digital. But if you have children or newbies that come over to race, is awesome. This car is set for full speed. You, there's a speed button. You hit it speed. Now, this will program every car that's on the track. So if you want to program five cars at once, you can put five cars on here and do this. If you just want to program one car, make sure you have all other cars off the track. Hit the speed button. You have speeds one through 10. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the fastest. So I hit start, it's programmed to go the fastest speed. Now, if my granddaughter's over here, you have small kids, you can program this to like speed one and a half, or, or I mean two, or three maybe. And if they hold that trigger down, it'll stay on the track. It'll go only so fast. Um, it has simulated braking, one through 10 also. <laughs> this is one thing, I when I ran magnets, I ran full power, and no brake. So when I let off that trigger, they would coast. They'll coast quite a ways. Um, when I run no magnets, I find I want the car slowing down pretty quick. So I actually have been running full brake. So when I let off, let off the trigger, the car almost stops. So, and you can adjust that one through 10. Um, some of my cars with no magnets, I have on braking seven or eight, but most of them I found I have full braking. So I almost forgot about that feature. Um, what else might you have questions of? These, these, these aluminum holders I have, they're awesome. 
slot car corner. Uh, I don't remember them being very expensive. They just, they have pre-drilled screw holes. I just screwed it into my wood track. They work amazing. Um, usually I just have three controllers up here because I, um, I have a bunch of, bunch of the stock Carrera ones. If, 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 if people came over <laughs> and we wanted to get crazy and race like six cars out there, but Usually when I race, it's me and one other person. So um, sometimes three people is seems to be a pretty good, pretty good deal. Um, if I regularly raced five people, I would probably add a pit, add a lane to my pit road so that we wouldn't be in each other's ways all the time. But right now I've got a pretty lengthy road. It hasn't been an issue. And when we're racing, you know, we have people don't stop here. If you're the first car, pull all the way to the end so that you leave room for people to uh, come in behind you there. As long as you're past that sensor that says fuel right here, the computer counts anything, anything in pit lane. So you don't have to stop right here to fuel. As long as you're past it, it says Jeremy's entered the pits. Um, you can go clear up to here and stop and refuel and the next guy and the next guy so um, it's also a good idea I have this single lane change here so whether you're from the outside or inside lane you can get into the pits I didn't put a double change there so you don't accidentally switch away from the pits now, it's also a good idea I don't have it <laughs> um, there can be a pretty bad wreck here if someone pulls out from the pits and someone's coming full speed down this straightaway. So a lot of people put a uh, from inside to outside lane change right here. So if they see someone in the pits, they can switch just to avoid them. Um, I have that track. I just haven't installed it yet. Um, I am going to put one there. Um, like I said, a lot of times I'm out here by myself. Kind of a loner kind of guy. I, I've gotten good at entertaining myself through the years. So um, a lot of times I, I'm out here alone. So it's uh, not an issue with me crashing myself coming out of the pits. Um, or if I'm racing a ghost car, I, you know, I'll wait for, I'll watch for it and wait for it. Um, but things can get pretty hectic during a race. Uh, people get excited. Um, I think that kind of covers the basics of a digital set. Um, like I said, with analog, your controller works one works one lane, and that's it. You don't have any of the pit features. I don't know how you, it, an app. I don't know how it would time your cars or work or anything. There's no sensors, so I don't know if there's even apps available for analog to time your cars. I don't know. I don't think there would be. Um, but like I said, this app will keep, it keeps track of all the laps I've done on my cars. As long as I have this app on when I'm running it, um, it's, it's kind of neat. I can see, oh, this car's got 800 laps on it. Might be time for some maintenance. Huh. Um, so, um, like I said, I enjoy it. Analog, the, the benefits to analog, I think would be the main benefit would be just being able to buy a slot car and it works on your track. You can buy any brand of slot car, put it on your track, and it's going to work. Um, the disadvantage with digital is it's, it's company specific. So if I have Carrera Digital, a Carrera Digital car will work. Any, uh, any other car, I have to add a Carrera chip to make it work on this track. If I put an analog car down on this track, it's full power, it just takes off. It does not work. Um, so I find myself, that's why I found myself with Carrera, um, Skelectric and Pioneer. Skelectric and Pioneer, there's a previous video on how to convert those on my channel. It's super easy to convert those to work on a Carrera digital track. So if you buy a Skelectric digital track, you, your Skelectric digital cars will work. 
a career digital car will not. You'll have to convert it to scale electric. So, um, Paul Schaefer just did a video of people saying Carrera and and scale electric and Pioneer cars are are more toy oriented. Um, and he he did a video where he had a slotted car, and he got the Carrera car to beat it, got the scale electric car to beat it. Um, so I think for a home track, that's not necessarily true. Um, now, the, if you go to the mall, go to a professional track, large-scale track, I'm sure those Revo slots, slotted cars, will, I mean, they'll walk away from Carrera and Scale Electric and Pioneer. But I think for a home track, they're, they're more than enough power. They're fun. Um, you can mod them. Piranha motors, take the magnets in and out, um, add some weights, and go from rubber to urethane to silicone tires. There's there's plenty you can do, um, and I think they're I think they're those three brands have been awesome for me for my home track. So um, you get into the higher end ones, there's more adjustability, um, there's more money. The bodies are real lightweight and flimsy, and um, th these these cars will take a beating. Um, I, I get people over here that they might knock a mirror off a car or so, but that car is still going to work at the end of the day. They're not going to break it or tear it up really. So I like the durability factor too. And the looks, I think Carrera, no one says Carrera, Pioneer, or Skeletric cars look bad. They look great. Um, so, um, tires, you can run rubber and urethane together. Um, if you go to silicone, you should go to all silicone um, because silicone picks up any rubber residue off of your track. Um, rubber tires will actually leave a mild residue on your track and the urethane and rubber work good on that. Urethane won't pick up and remove that like a uh, silicone tire will. Um, urethane doesn't, it's harder. It doesn't leave a residue I found, but a lot of my Pioneer and Skeletra cars are still rubber. And I treat them with WD-40. I know that sounds crazy. It's an oil slick uh, or solvent. Actually, it's not an oil. Um, you rub that into your tires. And yeah, they're slick. But let it sit there and absorb. And those tires become squishier and grippier. And you know, I don't know the physics of how it works. But on, it does nothing on a urethane tire. Urethane tires are good all the time. You don't need to treat them. But rubber... Sometimes they'll harden up a little bit. And if you rub a layer of WD-40, let it soak in, they become like new, pliable, squishy again. And the, the Scale Electric and Pioneer rubber, I leave on a lot of them. One, to get that uh, residue on my track. And, and two, they work good. Like I said, I found Carrera tires do not work good. They do not last. Um, the grip goes away. Um, I don't like Carrera tires. I think Dave Kennedy mentioned on one of his, they have to, uh, Carrera uh, sells their sets in Walmart and whatnot, and it's labeled as safe for toy for kids. So I think they have to take some of the some of the compounds out of the rubber tires in case a kid eats it or swallows it. <laughs> I whether that theory is right or not. That's the theory I've heard is they could make better tires, but then they uh, they'd have to put all kind of warning labels and whatnot on their cars. So. Anyway, I use Paul Gage urethane. Um, and with being rubber and urethane working good together, not all my cars have it. All my performance-oriented cars do. Um, you know, my Batmobile, my General Lee, Knight Rider car, things that aren't really meant to race, my tow truck. Those still have the rubber, rubber stock tires on them. Um, and that Porsche 904 I use for my ghost car that I was demonstrating with. I keep the magnets in that, and it's got rubber tires, and I use it as a ghost car. Um, so it's it's running around this track all the time, and it's got rubber tires, so it's laying down some residue for me. So anyway, oh, this video is about 30 minutes. So um, sorry if I went on too much, but uh, this is kind of just an inter introductory. If you're looking at new sets and what digital features have and how they work, um, I. I haven't tried anything. I've tried analog. 
I haven't tried any other digital sets. I've, I've read when I did my research career, I had more functions in the pits and, and, and it has the best apps that work with it. So I bought Carrera and I went from there. Once you're, that's another thing with analog. Once you build a set, you're, you're not really stuck. Once, once I've went Carrera digital and spent this money, I, I'm kind of stuck. I'm not going to go away from it. I don't want to. I like it. Um, they also make a box, get the company, that you can add to this controller and it'll make it to where you can switch it to an analog track and run any slot car. But to me, for the price of that and messing with that, I'll just figure out how to add a chip to my cars and keep it all digital. So that way I can use my app. Like I said, I enjoy my app back there on the TV. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, like I said, added features. And if you do, if you build something in your basement or garage like I did, you can even, I bought another cheap TV like out at Walmart. I can have the football game on out here over there and be over here racing my slot cars and have this TV work that. Um, works out great. Anyway, uh, I, I got a shipment from LEB coming. Six new Carrera. Like I said, when Carrera comes out with their yearly catalog, I ordered 11 cars this year in March. Um, I've gotten a few through, uh, throughout the year, four, four or five, I think. Anyway, six more came in from LEB. They just sent me the deal. So within a week or so, I believe I'll be getting a shipment of six Carrera, new Carrera digital cars. And two of them are the new Mercedes four-door 300 SEL. I think they're going to be awesome. So definitely, I'll definitely do an unboxing video there. Um, whether it excites you or not, I'm excited already. So that like new cars and new style of cars that I don't even have yet. So I think it's going to be great. Um, Till next time, this is uh, Garage of Slot Cars.